All right, this is one of my masterclass students actually sent the questions to me. And I find out this question maybe is considered quite hard for uh, SPM students. So I decided to make a separate video for every one of you. All right, let's have a look at this question. You, you will see a river here, and then we have a swimmer trying to cross the river or something like that. So yeah, you have the direction of north there. All right, so a swimmer swim across a river toward a north with a constant velocity of 1.8 meter per second as shown in the diagram. So there's a current of the constant velocity 0 0.8 meter per second flowing toward east. So determine the resultant velocity of the swimmer. Okay, so over here, we need to make it clear for a few things. Okay, the first information I should be able to understand the current over here is basically is the velocity of the water. Isn't it? So the current they tell us is um, 0 0.8 and toward east. So I have the velocity of the water which is the current here, is 0 0.8 meter per second. And then the direction is kind of like due east. Okay, the question says so. And then we have something like um, the velocity of the swimmer is like 1.8. We will write velocity of the swimmer is 1.8 meter per second. And then he toward north, we toward north. So I draw an arrow for it, toward north. This one toward east, okay? Okay, then the question asks us to determine the resultant velocity of the swimmer then you start to dub your previous information ready because how come we have two velocity of a swimmer? And then if you read the question carefully, this 1.8 itself is basically is the velocity of the swimmer relative to the current. Basically means this 1.8, when you calculate this 1.8, right? This 1.8 is actually affected by the current of the water. Okay, is affected by the velocity of the water. So normally this 1.8, I will not say is the velocity of a swimmer. I will say this one 1.8 is velocity swimmer relative to the water, or you can say relative to the current. Okay, then the question say the velocity of the swimmer is a resultant velocity. Okay, if in vector topic, you learn about, you learn about resultant vector. You know the resultant vector means what? Both vector plus together must get the resultant vector, isn't it? Example, so let's say I have a vector like this. So if I say this is a resultant vector, then I know this vector plus this vector must get the resultant vector. You get the idea? Okay, so if you get the idea, I will just want to draw a triangle here. So basically, in order to get the velocity of swimmer, I need to combine both of these vector. So the first one is due north. So I'm going to draw a north here. And then another one is due east. So for this due east one, you have two choices. The first choice you can connect in here. So you look like this vector plus this vector, or you can be connecting here. Also look like this vector plus this vector. Okay, but over here, you cannot connect here. Because you connect here, it doesn't seem like plus, right? Because plus must be the, the tips must follow with the tail. So in this one, it doesn't look like a plus, so like this cannot. So, but here, since the diagram actually look like this, I will just add here. So this one is the velocity of the water, 0 0.8. And then this one will be my velocity of the swimmer relative to the water, 1.8. All right, then because I want to get the velocity of the swimmer or resultant velocity of swimmers, I know it will be the last one. I need to connecting both of them. This one will be velocity of the swimmer. Because one is north, another one is east, another one is north, then this one middle must be 90 degrees, isn't it? So you can just use the Pythagoras to get a velocity, which is 0 0.8 square plus 1.8 square. All right, you should be able to get something like 1.97 meter per second. Okay, you just type everything into the calculator, then you should get the uh, correct answer easily here. Okay, so, okay, this is how I done about part A. Okay, but let me explain slightly further here. Okay. But how come um, the velocity of the swimmer were facing that direction? So you just imagine. So if I want to like um, if I want to go from the spotlight, okay, let me use the di diagram given here. If I want to, if I standing here, yeah, standing here, I want to reach here. So when I swim that time, I will need to face assume favor this direction. Okay, when I face facing this direction, you just imagine the current actually will push me. So 
eventually I will go into this direction. So therefore, this straight line itself is not really the sort of the final direction. It's like uh, relative to the water. So it's, it's basically it's the direction I plan. This one will be my, my the direction at the end. So this one is the redundant vector. This one is the relative vector. Okay, so you just imagine if the water can push my di uh, my planning direction, so eventually it will go all the way to this direction. Okay, this is the idea about relative velocity, but if you cannot get it, it's fine. It doesn't matter. All right, but if you can get it, it will be good. Okay, let's have a look at the part B. Okay, because this is A, they ask us to find the redundant velocity of swimmer, and B, they ask us to find the velocity of swimmer, so I will just kind of Imagine the A and B are not related, all right? So we kind of have the uh, new question, but this question A and B both is under this situation, right? Basically, mean I can use back the information above here. Okay, B they say if the swimmer is twenty meter, uh, is the river is twenty meter wide, find the velocity of the swimmer so that eventually he reached directly opposite the river bank in ten seconds. Okay, when they say direct opposite, a lot of students will just assume it's sort of like must be 90 degree like this, which is no. Huh? Okay, direct opposite also can mean it actually it can go like this and direct opposite here, sort of like direct opposite. Not necessarily must be 90 degree. Okay, this is what I want to tell you. Okay, so what I want to do right now is um, I will, I will just sketch out the river to give you some idea. And this river, I know the uh, width of it is 20 meter because the question says so. All right, and then I know I actually use the t I actually spend about 10 seconds. So I will assume the velocity of the current will remain the same, which is the velocity of water. So then what I will do is I will use 0 0.8 multiply 10 seconds to see how far the water actually travel in 10 seconds. So it's basically 8 meter. So therefore, I know the water actually travel about um I use th this color maybe the water actually travel to east about eight meter. Alright, so if I am standing here because the water going to push me right, so therefore eventually I will go into this direction, isn't it? After the water push me, so I need to go directly opposite. So therefore, what I want to do right now is I want to know what is the distance here. This is a hypotenuse distance. Since this is 90 degrees as well, so I can easily get the distance by doing the Pythagoras again. This is 8 square plus 20 square. Alright, but this one is a distance. Huh? Over here, you can realize uh, both of these are speed. So my final answer here is a speed. But both of here right now is a meter. So final answer is just a distance. Alright, I do not want to confuse you. Okay, so 8 square plus 20 square. And then my square root, my answer. I should get the distance is about 21.54 meter. Alright, then if I want to get the velocity, it's quite easy, right? We know it's basically distance divided by time. Since I have the distance, which is 21.54, and I have the time, it's 10 seconds. So by solving this one, I can know the velocity of a swimmer, which is 2.154 meter per second. 